welcome back to my channel. Today, let's talk about social studies for middle school. So as you've been hearing through a few of my videos, when it comes to social studies, I want to create a curriculum or a program or framework or path or scope and sequence. You can call it whatever you like, but I would like to create some type of scope and sequence that will take my son from the sixth grade through the eighth grade. In doing so, my objective is to give him high school credit for social studies at the end of his eighth grade year. Usually in middle school, guys, when it comes to certain subjects like your social studies, they're getting a basic foundation, a surface view of your United States history, world history, geography, and so forth. Just a little taste of it, right? And then when they go into high school, that's when they're diving deep and earning those credits, having um, more sensitive conversations. There's some critical thinking and application that will be included normally in the upper grades. So what I decided to do is give my son an incremental approach within the area of social studies so that he can take each of those courses step by step, focusing on a specific period of time throughout middle school, and then integrating those various topics and weaving in the critical thinking, analysis, application, writing, and so forth within everything that we're learning throughout middle school. So for social studies, I consider social studies, economics, humanities, world and human geography, U.S. government, U.S. history, and African American history within the United States. So instead of doing a course for every single one of those things, I wanted to, you know, create something that would cross each of those major subjects. So today what I want to show you is how I'm doing that. This video will be two parts. Part one, we will focus on geography and world history. What I'm using for those um, subjects and how they weave in together. Part two will be US history and African American history within the United States. I also will do an African studies course that I'm doing within our homeschool. Again, that will take all three years, but I will do that as a separate video. But again, at the end of eighth grade, the goal is to give him a high school credit in human slash world geography and to give him a high school credit for world history. So once he enters into high school, we'll have that done. By the end of eighth grade, he will also have earned half a credit in United States history and half a credit in African studies. And then in high school, ninth or 10th grade, just depends on what's going on, he will earn the other half a credit in each of those subjects that I just mentioned. So again, let me go ahead and show you the scope and sequence for our world history, again, which will be human and world history integrated together. In that, we're also going to do geography. So wherever we are in the world, whatever we're discussing in world history, we are going to tackle geography in those specific areas. In addition, we're going to ensure that my son also um, learns and tightens up his skills and make sure that he understands the other areas of geography. But again, I'll dive into that in just a moment. So bear with me at the length of the video. Um, I'm super excited to show you what we're doing. So let me right now show you our scope and sequence. So this is the scope and sequence that we will be doing throughout middle school. The goal, sixth grade year, which is this year, 2020, I'm sorry, 2019, 2020 school year is to focus on ancient times. Seventh grade year, medieval times. Um, medieval times can also be called middle ages or dark ages. 
And then in the eighth grade, we will do modern to present times. I also want to say that in the beginning of each year, for example, in the seventh grade year, in the eighth grade year, we will do a mini review of what we learned the prior year. And then as we're learning the new information each year, I'm going to you know, bring back some of that old information because he now has a framework to move forward with as he learns more information. And that's the whole point of a scope and sequence. The whole point of a scope and sequence is to lay a foundation, give your um, students, your children, a body of knowledge so that they can develop a framework for, a reference for, um, they can have experience with certain topics so that as you move along your scope and sequence, they can pull from that prior knowledge, have a framework to, you know, pour everything into as they learn new information. And that's the purpose of a scope and sequence in my um, humble opinion. And it also helps with critical analysis and critical thinking, because if they have experience, a, a toolbox of knowledge and a framework to work with, as you bring forth new information, as you bring forth new ideas, as you throw you know, new concepts to them, the goal is to have them apply what they've learned previously and bring it into the fold of what they're learning currently in order to find links, okay? So, Let's go ahead and show you what we're doing this year. I'm only going to show you sixth grade year because that's what we're currently in for ancient times. And as we go through our homeschooling journey throughout middle school, I will show you what we're using for the latter years. Many videos out on YouTube um, about story of the world. So I would say when I researched this, it says it's for elementary school students you know, your second, third, fourth, fifth graders. Me personally, I would never read this to my first grader, second grader, and even third grader. This is something that I would not, you know, care to share with them. I would probably do more unit studies. I would probably do more lap booking and watching videos and making it more project oriented, making it more engaging, hands-on. For those lower grades. I think this is awesome for a fourth grader, depending on reading level, you know, whether or not you're going to have them read on their own, or you're going to read it to them. I think it's wonderful for a sixth grader, seventh grader, and even eighth grader. An eighth grader should, should absolutely be able to read this on his or her own for independent work, have some projects, some activities, assignments. This would work perfectly, very easy even for a seventh grader. For my son, what we are doing, we have the audio, which we listen to in the car, you know, as we are car schooling, you wanna call it tr truck schooling, schooling on the go. If we are schooling on the go, this is our go-to right here, the CD. I also have it as an MP3. So if we are, you know, on the go and, we don't have access to a CD player for some reason because we're not in the car, then we can stream it from, you know, using the internet. We also have the book. The book is what I use to teach out of. And if we're listening to the audio version, I like my son to follow along with the book, okay? Let me show you the table of contents for Story of the World. I'm going too fast. Please go ahead and pause the video. Again, they're, they're probably more thorough reviews of this curriculum because this is a pretty popular per curriculum in the homeschool community. So I'm not going to go into great detail with the story of the world, ancient times. Just for your edification, they do. Um, I think there are four volumes as the making of this video 2019. There are four volumes. I do have volume two, which is medieval times again, that's middle ages and dark ages, but that's for seventh grade. Okay, so 
with story of the world, I am able to discuss geography. I'm able to discuss world history, of course, again, ancient times. And I am also able to discuss Bible. For story of the world, we do weave in our biblical studies. And that's going to cover Genesis through De Deuteronomy and what I found. Okay. Genesis through Deuteronomy can easily tie to what you are reading in ancient times. So for this curriculum, I've weaved in world history, I've weaved in geography, and I've weaved in Bible, okay? Included, we have test. Yes, we are giving test for middle school when it comes to social studies and the majority of all of our curriculum and subjects. So he will complete the test. I will grade it if he has anything wrong. He always um, gets one opportunity to correct any errors. Many videos out on YouTube um, about story of the world. So I would say when I researched this, it says it's for elementary school students, you know, your second, third, fourth, fifth graders. Me personally, I would never read this to my first grader, second grader, and even third grader. This is something that I would not, you know, care to share with them. I would probably do more unit studies. I would probably do more lap booking and watching videos and making it more project oriented, making it more engaging, hands-on for those lower grades. I think this is awesome for a fourth grader, depending on reading level. You know, whether or not you're going to have them read it on their own, are you going to read it to them? I think it's wonderful for a sixth grader, seventh grader, and even eighth grader. An eighth grader should, should absolutely be able to read this on his or her own for independent work, have some projects, some activities, assignments. This would work perfectly, very easy, even for a seventh grader. For my son, what we are doing, we have the audio, which we listen to in the car, you know, as we are car schooling, you want to call it tr truck schooling, schooling on the go. If we are schooling on the go, this is our go-to right here, the CD. I also have it as an MP3. So if we are, you know, on the go and we don't have access to a CD player for some reason because we're not in the car, then we can stream it from, you know, using the internet. We also have the book. The book is what I use to teach out of. And if we're listening to the audio version, I like my son to follow along with the book. Okay. Let me show you the table of contents for Story of the World. If I'm going too fast, please go ahead and pause the video. Again, they're, they're probably more thorough reviews of this curriculum because this is a pretty popular per curriculum in the homeschool community. So I'm not going to go into great detail with the story of the world, ancient times. Just for your edification, they do, um, I think there are four volumes as the making of this video, 2019, there are four volumes. I do have volume two, which is medieval times. Again, that's middle ages and dark ages, but that's for seventh grade. Okay. So with story of the world, I am able to discuss geography I'm able to discuss world history, of course, again, ancient times. And I am also able to discuss Bible. For story of the world, we do weave in our biblical studies. And that's going to cover Genesis through De Deuteronomy and what I found. Okay. Genesis through Deuteronomy can easily tie to what you are reading in ancient times. So for this curriculum, I've weaved in world history, I've weaved in geography, and I've weaved in Bible, okay? Included, we have test. Yes, we are giving test for middle school when it comes to social studies and the majority of all of our 
curriculum and subjects. So he will complete the test. I will grade it. If he has anything wrong, he always um, gets one opportunity to correct any errors. In addition to this, the other core curriculum that we're using for ancient times is Prentice Hall's World Study, Ancient Times. This is a school book. They use this in the public school system in middle schools, public and or private, not sure. Works great for me. If you know me, if you know anything about me, you know when it comes to resources, when it comes to curriculum, I do not shy away from anything. I don't care if it's homeschool, public school, private school, charter school, unschool, doesn't matter to me. If it meets my needs and it meets what I am looking for, um, for the season that we're in, for our goals and our overall objectives, for what we're trying to do with our children, I am going to use it. I'm not even afraid of using Common Core. It's not a dirty word for me, okay? So the reason why I like this book is because it ties beautifully to world um, story of the world. What we're learning in here, we also learn here. In story of the world, in its title, they teach history through storytelling. They teach it through actual events that have occurred. And my son loves the stories. He likes the reader of the story. He likes the flow of the story. He finds it to be interesting. Some people find it to be boring. I like it. Totally up to you. This here teaches history um, from the vantage point of giving facts, giving information. This is not a sexy curriculum. It is not you know, entertaining. It's not meant to entertain. It's made to have your children think. It's made to have your children learn information, learn facts, and provide a bit of critical thinking within it as well. Within any Prentice Hall World Studies book that you'll see throughout this video, they start off with all of their books with basic geography. Let me show you the table of contents for this first. I am, and while I'm you know, showing you the table of contents, I'll continue to explain how I use this. I do not have my son sit here read this dry book, and then answer questions and we move on. No. I may have him read Story of the World, listen to Story of the World. We talk about it. He answers questions in that test booklet or activity booklet. But for this one, I'm having my son read pages in advance, and then I teach it to him, okay? I love to teach concepts to him during our instructional day. I will... um not read verbatim, but I will pull out key points. I will pull out vocabulary. This book has questions that I'll show you. We'll go over those types of questions and we will just have a conversation. And since Story of the World works beautifully with this, in my opinion, it flows together. He has a frame of reference because we will always do Story of the World first before we dive into this book. Again, it gives him a frame of reference and some uh, a starting point. So here's where the, the geography begins. It starts off by giving you an understanding of geography, the five themes of geography, location, regions, movement, place, interaction, and it explains that throughout the book. And as you are learning about various topics throughout the book, it will dive into those various main themes. It explains the, the understanding of the Earth's movement. This ties to astronomy. So if your child has gone through astronomy, which we have um, during his fifth grade year, this that astronomy will give him a framework, an experience, a background, a toolbox of knowledge when it comes to learning about this here to include understanding globes, latitude and longitude, longitude, map projections, how to use a map, differences between political and physical maps, special purpose maps, human migration, how we use our land around the world. Okay, so this is what really... This is why I really like, this is why I like this. Also in this book, it goes and it talks about the guiding questions. 
when you are reading this book, here are the questions that you want to think about throughout geography in terms of world history. How did physical geography affect the growth of ancient civilization? What historical accomplishments in each civilization or what historical accomplishments is each civilization known for? What were the beliefs and values of ancient peoples? How did ancient peoples develop governments? How did ancient peoples develop economic systems? And then they can also give you projects throughout the book as well. Okay, so that's what your children are thinking about. That's what you want them to think about. Those are the types of um, critical thinking skills and analysis that you want your children to have or think about as they're going through the curriculum. Okay, investigate world history, ancient India, Greek settlements, and then we start with the book. Every chapter gives you a preview of what you're going to learn about. It gives you a targeted skill area that you're working on. It shows you some activities that you will do. You're focusing on movement. Remember those five themes of geography we spoke about earlier? This one is focused on movement. Again, Pre preparing to read before you read. I have that we talk about this. What are the objectives? How you can take notes for this particular chapter. They're teaching you note taking skills. Every chapter will give you an idea of how you can take notes. This is how I also help my son understand how to take proper notes. We can use our Cornell methods. This is a um, brainstorming method that we use. But again, there's so many different ways of taking notes. This just gives you an idea. Again, the targeted skill for reading, key terms, vocabulary. I will have him write these vocabulary words. Not all of them, it just depends on what my focus is. I'll have him write those on index cards or we can write them in his um, social studies notebook and so forth. And then we read. Okay, we read. If there are links, we'll do that. Again, a lot of this information, some of it is being introduced in story of the world because this, again, tells you history as a story. This is giving you facts. So when he's reading this, he has a frame of reference from this here. OK, at the end of every chapter, you can do your key term review. You ask questions um, based on the targeted reading skill. This question says, how did having a reading purpose help you understand this section. So when they gave you a purpose at the beginning of the chapter, how does a purpose help you understand what you're about to read? That's English language arts, okay? Comprehension and critical thinking, English language arts. They give you recall, what do you remember? Generalize, let's draw some inferences. Identify, explain, cause and effect, writing activity. You can go online and do another activity. I got this book, guys, from Amazon. I'll put it in the description box below. I want to say I got this book for $15 or so. They help you understand how to use a timeline. How to use a timeline in understanding history. How to um, create a timeline. Let's practice creating a timeline. Let's create one ourselves. Let's do some application. And it goes on to another chapter. Same thing. Key terms. What is the reading skill? What's the objective? Here's a way that we're going to take notes for this chapter. And then you read the chapter. I really enjoy this book. Again, it might be a boring read. If you're just having your child read it, I'm not going to do that. They probably do that in school. But we do this together. And then, again, here are your end of chapter assessments. We do this out loud. You have your recall, infer here. We're synthesizing, identifying contrast, of application, writing. Every chapter will teach you a basic skill, skills that you need in English language arts. So you see how we tied in geography, world history, English language arts, critical thinking. Okay. I'm just going to Flip through 
some of this here. We have some predictions, foreshadowing. So this goes in the same order as your normal um, world history for ancient times. You have your ancient time. Well, first they talk about, you know, prehistory, nomads, archaeology. Then they go into Egypt and then they go into India or China or they go into Romans and Greeks and things of that nature. So same order. You have some describe, some, you know, comprehension. Let's describe here. Let's link the past to the present. So again, they are teaching you various ways of how to think critically. I like this curriculum because it helps me teach him how to use critical thinking skills and how to use all those aspects of English language arts that we're learning and weaving it in into history. I wanted to show you what the end of a unit looked like. So at the end of every unit, they give you a chapter summary. So for chapter summary for sections one, two, and three, this is what we talked about. This should be um, this should be close to what you have your students taking in terms of notes, or this can be their notes for the purpose of studying for a test if you so choose. So this helps them review key terms that they've learned throughout the various sections within that chapter or various units within that chapter. And then here you have an uh, assessment or review. You can use this as your test. Okay, and that's what I do. I use this as my test and this will be his written test. So I would copy this. He would go to his um, social studies notebook and he would go ahead and answer all of these questions. And we've gone through how to, how to answer these types of questions because every unit has them. So when it comes to a test, it should be easy for him to understand how to Describe, identify effects, infer, identify, explain, summarize, evaluate information, draw inferences, compare, contrast, um, predict, foreshadow. Those things should be easy. Okay, and then they give him a writing assignment and an interactive activity. This also can be used for practice if you want to give them a quiz. You can utilize these three questions here for a quiz if you want to give him a different test instead of what I just showed you here you can go here into this link here and they give you a test for the entire chapter inclusive of all the units you've done and then they even allow them to submit it online and grade it online for you and you'll see what they have wrong so this is really cool and this helps them understand how to take a test how to think about test taking how to prepare and how to um, answer questions so we go through all of that I like this book. What we're using as a supplement for all things social studies is this big book of graphic organizers. I use it for our read alouds, some of them, but we're also going to use it for various aspects of social studies. And in this book here, it just gives you a graphic organizer, various graphic organizers to help your children understand or comprehend information. And then diagrams, compare and contrast, brainstorm, idea web, anticipation, hypothesis guide, vocabulary maps, vocabulary maps, Cornell notes, T notes, analysis notes, the five senses, outline notes how to understand the gist, how to question the author, connect relationships. Okay, so let me just go through this book for you. The only thing I don't like about this is that the paper is thin, so when you make a photocopy, I like to put a dark sheet of paper behind it so that it doesn't capture anything that is behind the actual page. So for example, if I'm printing this page here, I'll put a piece of black paper behind here, photocopy it so that this information here doesn't transfer. So the paper is really thin, that's what I don't like. On this side of the page, it tells you how to use it, gives you ideas, 
and then you can make your copy here. It also tells you up here the level of difficulty and what grades it's most recommended for. So again, this will help us with critical um, thinking, analyzing information, and things of that nature. As you can see, I already made some copies. So that's what we're using for world history. Or sorry, world studies. So something else we're using for world studies or world history and linking that to geography are these books here. Again, this is also from Prentice Hall. It works the same way like I showed you in the first book. Okay, this is Western Hemisphere, Eastern Hemisphere. If we're in the Eastern Hemisphere, we'll go here. If we're in the Western Hemisphere, we'll go here. Western Hemisphere, that's, you know, your North and South America. That's your Canada, United States, Mexico, South America. Eastern Hemisphere is everywhere else. So obviously we're talking about ancient times. We're in the Eastern Hemisphere. So between the sixth through the eighth grade, we will get through both of these books. This here will tie beautifully with our United States history, because as we're learning United States history, we will have learned um, geography from that vantage point, and we'll also have learned what's going on in the Western Hemisphere and how um, different things impact the various cultures and societies and um, countries and continents that are within the Western Hemisphere. If something happens in South America, how does it impact North America? If something happens in Mexico, how does it impact South America? So this will give us links. This will help us understand that from a world perspective and from a human perspective. And this will do the same thing for Eastern times. Let me show you the table of contents. Again, same thing. It gives you a brief understanding of basic geography in the beginning of all the Princess Hall books, world culture, interacting with our environment. Again, from the Western Hemisphere's perspective. It goes into the U.S., United States, well, same thing, U.S., Canada, the history, how it was shaped, the culture. It goes into straight detail about the United States, straight detail into Canada separately, Latin America, that's your South America, Latin America, the cultures in Latin America, how it shaped history, then we go into Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean, South America. So again, it gives you the same type of stuff. You have your chapter. What's the purpose of the chapter? What's the reading goal? Gives you an idea of how to take notes, objectives, target reading skills, key terms. It gives you the chapter information. You have your interactive stuff going on here. Mapping. At the end of every section, which is like a unit within a chapter, again, you get your key terms, same thing. Critical thinking, same thing. Writing activity. Another method to write notes for this particular chapter. This is teaching so much skills. So many skills, excuse me. Same thing for the end of chapter assessment, key terms. You can use this as a test or a quiz. I use it as a test. They give you an additional test, teach you how to prep for a test, study for a test, practice problems to, to do based on what they've shown you here. And again, you can go here, take the self-test, they grade it, tell you what's wrong, your child can redo it if they so choose, okay? So this will coincide with our world, world history, geography, and U.S. history, and Western Hemisphere will coincide with our world history as we're talking about ancient time medieval times, modern to current times in the Eastern Hemisphere. This is where this comes to play. Okay, so this is an all-inclusive. Love it. Let's talk about geography. For geography, we're using these two books throughout middle school. If you notice, the focus is Western Hemisphere. This one is straight United States only. And this one is Western Hemisphere, where we're talking about Canada, North America, 
Mexico, Central America, you know, and, and Latin America, um, South America, okay? Let me show you the table of contents. And this curriculum, not curriculum, but this resource here is where we're pulling to dive deeper into whatever we're learning. So it's just worksheets, straight worksheets. Answers are in the back. So as we're learning information in those Prentice Hall books that I was just showing you, or as we're learning information throughout U.S. history, geography, mapping, we'll pull worksheets from here to dive deeper and have visuals. Let me show you, this. Let me show you the, table, the table of contents for this one. This is the 5th, 6th grade. The other one was 6th, 7th grade. The 8th grade one I'm not getting because that is... Focusing on Eastern Hemisphere, although we are learning about Eastern Hemisphere throughout middle school, I don't want, I don't need to dive deep where he has to learn about every single country and every single religion and culture on the Eastern Hemisphere. The only country I'm focused on or continent that I'm focused on on that side in terms of its own studies is Africa. Africa, we're doing our own studies on African, um, for African studies. Everything else is surface for that side of the world. And then we dive deep into the Western Hemisphere because that's where we live. As we are, you know, doing world studies, we will also read books, literature. We will weave in literature. So if you have not already seen my video where I talk about how we are weaving in literature, please go ahead and look up now. Um, on the right or left side of this video, I will put a card to the books that we are reading this year. So as we are reading books, we are learning. So if I'm in a particular section or chapter within history or timeline within history, we are reading a book that coincides with that. So again, climate, weather, mapping, longitude, latitude, history, historical events, that took place within the United States. That's what this book is all is focused on Native Americans. We pull worksheets from here. In addition to that, we will pull worksheets from here. We will finish this book in the sixth grade. We're not doing every single worksheet here, but again, it just gives us a way to visualize what we're learning and do something a little different throughout the year so that we can get out of the textbook. We, of course, will do projects throughout the year. And I will document all of that good stuff as we are making things happen and implementing things. Let me show you the table of contents for this. Again, everything Amazon. Look at the description box below. You'll see links. So this book, the focus is Western Hemisphere, the United States specifically. So we will have all our geography skills between this and this. All of our geography skills will be there. And just to show you, here are some of the books that we're reading this year. That it was not in the video that I showed you about our literature because I focused on certain aspects of history, United States and ancient times in that video. But this again will show you, this here, what I'm showing you now, are the books that I consider to be, you know, learning something different about a culture, a people, a religion, a group for tying into our world studies for this year. All right, guys, that is it. If you have any, oh, sorry, I forgot to show you these here. A few supplements that we're using, a few resources. I'll show you a few resources. This coincides with geography and um, United States history. So you'll probably see this in my next video about United States history. We're also going to use this. This is a Charlotte Mason um, curriculum. I think it's pretty cool. It'll allow us to, again, get out of the textbook 
and do something fun in terms of learning about the geography of the United States. We also have the one for Africa, but that's going to be in my African studies video. So with this curriculum here, these resources come with Material World, Hungry Planet. I really like this because it allows you to see how different people live in different parts of the world in terms of food, consumption, and in terms of material things. So within this Charlotte Mason book here, this guide, it will introduce you to various families within these two um, books here, and you will learn about their culture, their way of life, how they eat, what the cost of food looks like from one country to the next country, from one culture to the next culture. So I really, really like that. Beautifully illustrated. So that was in terms of in terms of how we live, our possessions. And you will quickly realize, and your kiddos, kiddos will quickly realize that in the United States, guys, we are blessed. Amen. We are blessed because we have so much. And even in times where we think we don't have much or don't have anything, when you compare yourself to others who live in other countries and you see how they live, you second guess yourself and you put things into perspective. And then when you see... So the other geography slash world studies that I showed you from Prentice Hall. Again, those tie world history to geography, okay? This book here is straight world history. This is from Holt McDougall. This is a high school curriculum. So the books that I showed you earlier are middle school, they are normally used in the 7th and 8th grade, and in some cases, ninth. This book here is normally used in high school, ninth and 10th grade, to give the students that world history credit. So this is not going to touch on human geography, nor is it going to touch on world geography. It's straight geography. So the reason why I wanted this is because it will help us um, link patterns of how people and culture and how everything in the world links together and how they interact with one another. This book, my son will not be given for the purpose of reading and answering questions. This is what I'm actually using to build our foundation for world history throughout the next three years. So we're going to cover all of the topics throughout this book. Like I said, in sixth grade, we're covering ancient times. So what you're looking at in the first few chapters will cover ancient times, okay? We have classical Greece. We have the first age empires, um, Egypt, Mesopotamia. We go into, again, classical Greece and Rome and early Christianity, India, China, African civilizations. And then we go into the early Americans. And then we go into the Muslim world, Russians, Turks, empires of East Asia. And then we dive into Middle Ages, European Middle Ages, um, the formation of West Europe, Western Europe, societies and empires of Africa. And it connects the hemispheres. It's going to connect the North, the, um, Western Hemisphere to the Eastern Hemisphere. So again, this book here is basically going to go through every single area of world history from prehistory to ancient times, Middle Ages, Medieval, Dark Ages, whatever you want to call it, to modern times, okay? And it will touch on major wars, and it will touch on major events that took place in the Western Hemisphere, specifically in the United States. So I like this again because it links everything together. It helps you understand the patterns, how um, everything interacts with one another within the world. So again, that's why I specifically chose this, okay? And this is a school book. They use this in the public and private schools. Okay. 
So let me show you what a chapter looks like. You have your chapter. You have your vocabulary, ways to make inferences. You have your assessment here. Again, they show you a way that you can take notes for this particular chapter. It talks about the main ideas, gives you some vocabulary, critical thinking and writing, just like with Prentice. Um, the books I showed you earlier, this also helps you understand things critically and how it connects to today. This is a very old book, so of course, in connecting to today, I would have to do some further research. Um, my son and I can do some further research to understand how what we're learning um, connects with whatever is happening currently in the world today. Okay? Let's see here. And then they give you an assessment. And we will probably do this orally. So between this book and the other books that I showed you, he would have an assessment. I might say, you know, we'll take a few questions from the other books, a few questions from this book, and I'll create um, a document for him to be tested on. We can do it orally. I can have him um, use a graphic organizer to do some sort of um, activity to explain what he's learned. Okay. So again, this book here is going to be used to, to help me build the foundation, to help me touch on topics I don't want to forget in all things world history. Again, if the child was in public or private school, they would be going through this whole book in one year and getting their credit. But for me and my son, we're taking an incremental approach. We are going to take this um, time period by time period throughout middle school so that at the end of eighth grade, he's going to have a, um, <laughs> a thorough education on all things geography, all things world history. Okay. He's not just going to learn facts. He's going to learn how things connect. Making connections is very important to me. Okay. And then when we're in the eighth grade and we get into modern times to present, of course, I will have to bring in something different um, just to make sure we cover what's taking place. This book, I think, goes up until 9-11, and that's it. So anything past 9-11, then, you know, we'll do that separately, okay? And as we learn different things, items that or topics or things that occurred in history that he finds interesting. We'll just pull out unit studies. We'll use resources um, that I have within the home at the library to learn. We're going to learn through, like, like I told you earlier, literature. We're going to learn through movies. Um, there are a lot of movies out there, a lot of documentaries out there that are available to you on Amazon Prime, on Netflix, on YouTube, and items that you can purchase on DVD, right? That we can incorporate within our home education to bring things alive. It's not only about a textbook, but it's utilizing other methods of learning to make all of this um, mesh well together. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comment box below. And as, as always, guys, you be blessed and make it a fan.